Imagine just moved to a new city and you're looking for a place to stay. And on your first property visit, you come across this apartment that is in a seemingly great location, very comfortable looking, and you're more or less ready to sign up on the place. So now imagine the night before as you're about to go ahead with it, as you're about to go to sleep and you're very happy you found this place. Suddenly, this thought comes across your mind. What if there's actually a better place? What if there's another place that has a bigger backyard or bigger kitchen, bigger living area? And suddenly you start to doubt, wait, have you actually searched enough? I mean, that was the first property. What if there's a much better one and you've not found it just yet? And suddenly this determination that you had is replaced by this paralyzing anxiety over the decision you're about to make. Now this feeling I'm describing is probably not new to you. You've probably faced it in many other scenarios too. For example, maybe you were trying to get a new phone and as you're heading to the mall to get this phone, as you're passing by these other stores that are selling other phones, suddenly you're wondering, wait, are you making the right decision? It is a rather expensive purchase. And maybe you pull your old phone and you go on Google and you realize that the phone that you're about to get, there's a new version coming out. Should you wait? What if it's actually significantly better? And suddenly you're replaced again with this sense of anxiety. Or maybe even more personal setting. Maybe you've been single for a while and you've been dating. And then after a few dates, you meet somebody who's asking you to get into a serious relationship. And suddenly you're wondering, should you go ahead with it? What if there's actually a person who's better out there and just haven't met them yet. And again, the same feeling. Now, this feeling I'm describing is very common to all of us. And this feeling really revolves around a question of probability. When we are faced with the possibility of all the options that are available of any decision we make, we could constantly search through all these options and review all of our possibilities before making any decision. Theoretically speaking, we could spend a long time searching and reviewing. But when do we know when to stop? And this problem actually has a name. It's known as the optimal stopping problem. And as much as we identify it, mathematicians actually believe they have a solution to this problem. According to them, there's actually an optimal point of when to stop before you make any decision. In other words, there is an arithmetic to making better decisions when faced with all the possibilities. The first thing that mathematics can teach us is the importance of actually sampling. From a statistical standpoint, it is actually disastrous when you're faced with a decision that has many possibilities to decide right away. Statistically, that sets you up for greater risk of failure or making the wrong decision. So what mathematics would suggest is that we have to build a sample size. It is incredibly risky to make a decision immediately when there are other options available. Of course, it would be amazing if we could sample every single possibility before we make a decision. But we know that is practically impossible and mathematics also recognizes it as being impractical, at least from a statistical standpoint. So what mathematicians have found out, especially in a recent paper that was submitted to the publication Plus, was that when you're actually sampling possibilities before making a decision, statistically speaking, the magic number is actually 37% before you make a decision, something they've come to call the 37% rule. In great to detail. Basically, when we're faced with an unknown situation where there are some great options, perhaps let's say out of 100, rather than make a decision immediately, which is of course very, very risky in terms of actually choosing the wrong thing, we should sample at least 37% of all the options before we actually make a decision. In other words, you do not make a decision until after you've sampled 37% of all the options in simple terms. And the reason why this works is because what they've done is through calculation, they've seen that statistically speaking, if there are some great options that exist out of a pool of 100, we increase our chances of actually picking those options after we've actually factored in 37% of all the options that we're presented with, and that even if we've discounted them, but we've gained a model of those 37%, our choices after that will help us increase the probability of success of picking the right ones with all variables considered in those scenarios. Now, this might sound very, very complicated. In simple terms, it is this. Suppose if you were to make a decision on which apartment to pick, or which person to date. Suppose if you were to consider out of, let's say, 10 properties or let's say 10 people, don't decide immediately on the first person or the first place that you go to or you meet. Do it after you've actually sampled at least three of them, three of which you do not commit to in terms of actually deciding, three of which would help you build an understanding after which you make that decision. If let's say you're presented with a great choice after the third one, then you can commit to that one immediately. It isn't perfect 
perfect, but it increases the chances of success from a statistical point of view. And what this does is it strikes a balance between deciding too quickly or impulsively and also not deciding at all because of the endless possibilities of options. And it strikes it quite beautifully from a mathematical standpoint. You can also see parallels with this 37% rule with psychology and game theory. The same truths are being repeated there. You see, in psychology, there's this concept known as the explore and exploit trade-off. This is also a concept that we see in game theory. But basically, but basically in life, we play many games. Decision making is a game, of course. We would tend to be presented with the option of actually exploiting, which is to cash in on the rewards available to us. For example, to take up the property that you just saw. Or we could explore and continue the search. Well, the fascinating thing is that what psychology has revealed is that most people, they tend to fall into the extremes. They either are very exploitative or explorative. They tend to cash in too early, generally speaking. A lot of people in life, they tend to not think too much and just go ahead with the things that are in front of them and immediately reap those things. Yet there are also so many of us who just can't seem to make our minds and we're so indecisive and we constantly look. And what psychology and game theory would reveal in a recent journal entry by Adicott published in the journal Nature is that you have to strike a balance between the two to really increase the probabilities of winning from a game theory point of view. In other words, we can't be too exploitative, we can't be too explorative. And this again ties in also with the mathematical concept of the 37% rule. So if you tie it in together, Together, the most optimum way of actually making any decision is after a certain level of exploring. And if you were to really follow the mathematical proposal and statistics, that would be 37% of sampling. Now, this arithmetic isn't without its problems, of course, because as we know, when we're talking about human affairs, it isn't very simple, is it? Sometimes when you're making a decision, objectively speaking, maybe the first choice is the ultimate choice. And sometimes, perhaps, the previous choices that you come across, the previous sampling, previous options, they might have been the best choice after all. And ultimately, you might have your own variables of what exactly you're looking for. So again, the 37% rule doesn't guarantee ultimate success, but I think what it does illuminate for all of us is that when we're presented with possibilities and if we really are so unsure, it is a general rule of life that we should search. The 37% rule might provide us a good starting point to consider when there's not enough information and we feel that paralysis. This is perhaps when we can apply the 37% rule.